Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I still haven't tamed this hair, but is it meant to be tamed? I'm coming at you real soft and supple this morning. Happy Wednesday and welcome to Morning Chat with me, according to a car. So welcome. Um, today, I don't even know why I came on, you know, <laughs> all soft and supple like Happy Wednesday. Good morning. I'm not trying to seduce none man, none, none of y'all. Okay? I don't know. It just, that's the way the spirit flowed this morning. Do, do, do. So, as you see, today I'm not bringing in any, my regular old nude, uh, uh, shimmering, sheer lip gloss this morning. Um... But I'm bringing you earrings, earrings, ah, and a different shirt. Coffee. <laughs> I'm sitting up there acting a whole fool, burning my leg with my coffee. Well, I mean, it's not burning, burning because the coffee isn't scorching hot. Thank you, Lord. Or I'd have been like, oh, wait, 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 going to the hospital for third degree burns. Thank you, Lord. Um, but I'm sitting up here acting a fool with coffee in my hand. Okay, child. Might have made a whole mess on my floor. Guess what? You get to see what I have on, what shorts I have on. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. Well, well it doesn't look like you got to. <sighs> now, for all this getting up I'm doing... I could have just made my coffee while I could have came on on time at 8 o'clock this morning. Look for all this. So, anyway, good morning. Uh, <laughs> see, the, the good thing about IG people who happen to catch me live and get to upload live is that you get to see this. Because I'm not editing a damn thing. Okay? Not here. You don't get, uh, you get the unedited, uncut, oopsies, oops, I did it again. All of that. You get the whole live and living color. Um, me. So today, um, topic, it's not random. I do have a topic this morning. I just want to kind of go over a little bit my review last night of um, chapter 16 and 17 and it was they did have a breakthrough that Kara had a breakthrough but you go back you on IG people on IG uh, go back and watch it it's on it's in here it's in there live and living color it's in there so I've already did it in it it triggered a little bit. I noticed that the author commented. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Oh, Lord, did I, did I stir my honey in here? Mm. Um, I think it really went good. Um, I'm going to try to save a lot of my comments for when we interview but I want to say one of the things and I, I, that I love about knowing the author of this book is I get behind the scenes how she came up with some of these things. And we'll talk about that on Saturday. But um, <laughs> um, the Frustrating part about it, a little. No, it's frustrating. Okay, I uh, I like to present authentic authentication and being the authentic you. So I'm gonna say it is frustrating that it seems like because this book was birthed from this person, like this was their baby. So when you make a critique. Or you say a certain thing about their baby. They quit to be in your comments 
about what this is why and this is why and explaining things. It's like, I get that part. I was just telling you what it triggered in me. And I'm pretty sure the author is going to see this too. But I'm going to say, I, I will say this. And hold me accountable if you cops show up. It will definitely be um, in the midday on Saturday that we're going to do our live. Because I'm going to do my interview live. Okay, I like that. Um, because I right now don't have the equipment to edit the way I want to edit. So that I can't pre, I can't video and do like... Yeah, I, I can't edit the way I want to edit it, and I'm not at the place where I have an editor that I can send my videos to and say, I want this cut out, put this in, so on and so forth. In time, in time, I'm going to stay consistent. I'm going to stay in this game, okay? Oh, yeah, that's better. I didn't stir that honey up in there. Um... Uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I wasn't asleep. I was thinking on how I was saying what I said. But it is a little bit frustrating when the author knows you and they review you. And they review what you review and they feel like they need to explain everything. And it's like, I got that part. I get it. <laughs> I get it. I'm just saying it triggered me in this way. I couldn't handle it. But outside of that, I mean, but it's cool because they get to comment and then explain what it seems like you didn't understand they kind of give you in time corrections so um so that is pretty cool too but i really enjoy i've been enjoying this book this really kind of get me back into my reading groove um take all of me um it's a bdsm love story They'll say, what? BDSM and love story all together? Yes, people. People. It's not just some dom sub spankings and whipping and you go on about your life. People fall in love with these people. With each other. You know what I'm saying? In these groups. In, in these fetish groups and stuff like that. They fall in love. Okay? Now... I'm still debating on what I'm going to, what book I'm going to do next. Um, yeah, I'm going all out of this shot, but I ain't turning this, so y'all going to have to see me go in and out. Hey, when I'm in the car, you only get this part of me. <laughs> you be, you be real. Y'all be getting half of me. Like, y'all be all in this part of the frame of my... Until I can get, I'm a, there's some things that I want to get, and I'm a, I'm a, we're gonna talk about that because we're gonna do manifestation talk a little bit here. So I was thinking there was a book that my father gave me some years back. And I want to say it was maybe a couple of years called "The Warmth of the Other Suns," and um, it is. It is a complete different than Take All of Me. But it's a book that I've had here, and he suggested I read it. Um, and knowing my dad, if I'm correct, it's probably something in politics. Um, this was here, um, a suggestion by the author of Take All of Me, suggested um, I do... Um, Contact High, she gifted me that book. Um, it's about hip hop in the form of pictures and all. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, or should I look into buying books that are more along this erotica? Because I am doing bedtime stories. You know what I'm saying? Or do I want to get into <laughs> scary? Do I want to get into uh, a horror? Or do I want to do other love stories, like actual, like, you know, am I doing fiction? Am I am I going to self-help books? I'm, I'm going to do a little array, and I haven't gotten my niche in it, but, or am I going to do celebrity books? I thought of maybe doing, um... 
doing, uh, there's a couple of people that wrote a book, uh, um, Jason Lee, God Must Have Forgotten About Me, maybe getting his book and reviewing it. Or, um, and I, girl, please forgive me if you happen to run across this. I don't mean to do this to you because right now I don't remember your name off the top of my head, girl. But, um, it's, um, shoot, I can't remember your husband's name either. Usher's wife has written a book, has published a book about her life. Um, Am I going to do autobiographies like that? Um, do I go back and go do old school autobiographies like Malcolm X? Um, do I, you know, so it, it's kind of hard. It's easier for me to just take the book that I already have. And I'm kind of looking at that book and it looks like that's going to be a hard, not a hard read, but kind of. It might put me to sleep. It might not be. It won't be juicy. It won't give me the, ooh, what, what, what? You know what I'm saying? It's not going to give me page turners. And it is going to be educational and it'll be like reading a textbook. But we will see. I might try to read a little bit of it this weekend. And then, and I'm going to take, um, yeah, or and next week. Maybe read through it to see if I can say, oh, no, I can, I can review this book. It's more interesting than I thought. Um, but I do, again, I started this book review thing just, one, first to promote my friend's book. She's had this book published since um, no, it doesn't have the publication date. It doesn't have like the information in a typical book. It tells me when she first did the first volume of Take All of Me. But I remember getting it on um, Kindle back in, and I was still living in my condo at the time. So it was like 2016. Um, not even then, probably further than that, 2014, 2015, something like that. Um, and I had gotten it on the, the digital version and it was just, it wasn't hard for me to read. I'm just not a big, oh, I can't wait to get the next book and get into it. I'm not, the, I've never been that person. You know, if I read your book and I read it all the way through and I can, that is a testament to your book that I actually got into it. And it wasn't easy for me. The digital version, I tried to get in and read it. It's like I couldn't get past the first chapter because I just, it's not like, and, and I don't know, I'm old school. I need a book, book, or paperback, a hardback. I, I need an actual paper and ink on pages um, to really kind of get into it. And, or I did not have a tablet or a Kindle to hold in my hand and go through and read it like that. Because I'm pretty sure I could read it like that. But trying to read it on your phone and then scan, it, it, it was just too much. So I'm looking to see what I'm going to review next. Um, and um, I'm going to pray about it. I'm going to see if I want to go stay in the genre that I am kind of doing or something close to it, something erotic. Uh, erotica or if I want to go into what I have here it makes sense financially I don't have to buy a new new book I have one here and it may have really good information for me to talk about um, or if I want to go celebrity goss um, bio uh, uh, autobiographies of their life or people that like like Usher's ex-wife you know she's not Usher but she's his wife and she has her whole life prior to meeting Usher. You know, what put her in that position of meeting him? 
was she always destined to be this, um, she's a, a, a stylist. Was she always this way? Let's understand her, you know. Well, I, I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. That's going to be interesting. Um, next subject I want to talk about is how easy it is for you to just get lost in your phone. Oh my God, you go to pick up to go find something, Google something, one thing, or go and um, check your messages, or um, you go there to, to pull up your bank information or whatever, and how easy it is to get lost. Oh my God. I think Kevin on stage, they were talking about how um, the social media sites are designed for you to stay in them scrolling and watching child instagram got me instagram instagram yes instagram will do it youtube will do it as well facebook not so much but you know instagram and facebook are the same company instagram is birthed out of facebook okay so um how they get me, how Instagram gets me every time. And I'm mad. I'm not mad at it. It's genius. I'm not even mad, but I'll get in there and I'll be, I'll see that the, I get a notification. Boom. Someone either liked the post or they commented on a post or something like that, right? Or someone's going live. I get that notification. And I go there to see, read that, and then I end up getting into the reels. Uh, child, next thing you know, I've been in watching Instagram reels. I didn't, I'm into the 50th one. Well, maybe not. It's not that bad. I'm being, I'm exaggerating the point, but it's like, I came in here to read this message. I came in here to find this, or I came to my phone. I picked up my phone. Excuse me. <laughs> um, to check bank information, check an email, not even in Instagram, and I still end up in Instagram checking it because I got a notification for this or play a game, and next thing you know, you have been looking at a screen all day, all day. You realize how much we look at a screen. I'm looking at a screen right now. How many, how often do you turn off your television, turn off your phone? Okay, turn your phone off so no one, you can't get no notifications, you can't have nobody call you. When's the last time you turned off your computer? Turn off your game. Okay, how often, how, how often do you do that? I mean, because if you're not looking at a screen at work, now some, and not everybody has... Some people are blessed and they don't have to look at a screen at work because they work on, uh, they work in a, a loading dock or something like that. But they're probably looking at some type of screen, like checking their, the, the iPad or the computer device, a device to make sure that they packed everything, blah, 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 blah. If you're a cashier, you're looking at the a computer screen, not a cashier little box with that. I don't know too many that have that little thing, but you're looking at that. You're looking at your phone if you're using the, um, um, dang it on it. I can't even think of you using the PayPal swipe or the uh, other one, cash app, swipe, what are all that? If you're doing that, you're looking at that screen. You're looking at your computer screen. You're looking at email screens. You're looking at your phone. You're looking at uh, your your note, your tablet. You're looking at your television. You're looking at the car monitor in your in your vehicles now. <laughs> When's the last time you just turned it all off? You just looked at the trees and looked at nature. Looked out your window. You know what I'm saying? Just turn off the screens and look at real life. Just look out your window. And then the thing is, if you do look out your window, guess what you're going to see? People like this looking at their screens. 
I got a fake phone. I mean, a phone that is not. I got two phones. One that I'm doing my podcast. I mean, one I'm doing my <laughs> live on one that I'm faking like I'm. But you're going to find people doing this. When's the last time you actually went to dinner with friends and y'all actually talked to one another and looked each other in the face and talked? How many of them, while they waited for people to get here, how many people, three people at the table and they're all like this? And I'm pretty sure the young people are sitting up here messaging each other and they're across the table from the person. Now, it'd be different if you're trying to send a secret message. You know what I'm saying? I remember, <laughs> funny story, short story. Okay, now, as you know, I'm 49 and and I'll, I'll be 50 in three months, right? Well, uh, less than three months now. <laughs> I remember being in class in high school. We were in computer classes. The first computer, the big back computers we don't have text messaging on phones we don't even have cell phones yet we have car phones we don't have cell phones yet okay and being in class and learning how to message the computers in the class and sending messages to different people in the class on the computer i am ancient I'm ancient. Do you realize, I realize that I am 49 and a half. Well, no, I know I'm 49 and a half. I mean, I'm, I'm almost 50. I recognize that I embraced my, my middle age, my 50. I embrace it. I enjoy it for all the good and the bad. I love it. Okay? Regardless. My knees don't, I don't got the stallion knees anymore. Okay, uh, you know, I got to be careful how I go up my stairs, okay, but the wisdom and the knowledge and the recognizing that I was in that generation that saw how the, the, the change of technology, the vast change of technology, okay, like I was there. I've, I've seen how televisions went, had the big bat, and you was doing something if you had the floor television, and the importance of having, I was there when we had black and white TVs. I remember having a, 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 a house phone, and rotary phones, and then car phones, and then cordless phones. Then the brick cell phone, okay. Oh, I'm sorry, I almost forgot pagers. How many of you young people remember, or how many of my people that follow me remember a pay phone? These young people don't know nothing about having to have a dime, a dime, okay. Now, some of y'all are old enough to, oh, I remember pay phones, and you was in, you in this new generation, I remember pay phones, but you remember when they were 50 cents. Do you remember when they was a dime to make a call? How many of y'all remember um, being old enough to, that you can't call long distance, that long distance was totally separate? I don't know the pain of you better call your grandmother collect. I can't afford you to use up my long distance on calling your hello. We got phone bills. Y'all thought y'all was sneaking around and y'all was sitting there calling these these party lines and you calling these one eight hundred and one nine seven six numbers. How about y'all? Anybody remember nine seven six numbers? Okay, hello, raise your hand if you remember that. And you think that you're not supposed to be using the phone. You think 
<laughs> you think because your mom left you home, you, she had to go grocery shopping, you go and call your friends, like she don't know that you call your friends, but on the phone bill it tells, lists all the numbers that call, that you called from that number. And you think your mom was mean because she whooped you about everything. But then you realize, wait a minute, my mom knew I was on the phone when she was gone. And I didn't get in trouble for breaking the rules. <laughs> I didn't get in trouble. She did not whip me for being on the phone while she was gone. I literally, I remember being on the phone in my mother's room, looking out her side window where you could see the driveway and being on the phone, ha, 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 talking to my friends, blah, 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 da, 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 you know what I'm saying? And then looking out her window to see when she pulled up into the driveway. I'd have been fucked up if my mom decided to park on the street. But my parents never parked on the street unless, you know, they never parked their vehicle. And it makes sense. That's their house, their driveway. I'd be damned if I park in front of the house. In my driveway, all when whoever car is there better move so that I can park. <laughs> okay. But as soon as she pulled up, click it. Okay, I got to go. Bye. Not realize my mom's getting the list of all the calls that went and gone out of the house. Or um, thinking that I'm slick. And, okay, so I can't be on the phone. Okay, mom, I'm going down to the store. I ain't going down to the store. I'm about to spend this change. Okay. I'm getting my handful of dimes and I'm calling a boyfriend. <laughs> calling friends from my phone, from, from the um, pay phone. Oh, COVID could not have happened in 1980. Okay, COVID could not, oh, you're talking about, y'all think y'all, at least y'all have devices, you have your own device, you can, you know, what, uh, child, you couldn't, we, we, as a teenager, I would have died if I could not go, because you go into a pay phone, everybody, all, you don't know who's been on that phone next, last. And you all, yeah, uh-huh, mm, yeah, girl. And for hours, we had pay phones in our high school, in my high school. And that was the most traffic place. People, who the hell you calling from school? Who you on the phone with at school? Those pay phones were not there for you to be just, who you calling? Who's at home while you at school? Who you calling? <laughs> but we had them and they was traffic. Like people was really talking on the bag bones. <laughs> it's just, uh, I mean, like when I think about it, it's like how awesome it is to see the ch change of technology. And man, the way y'all are, the way you all, you all are on your devices we were on telephones and watching TV. You know what I'm saying? Cable. VCRs. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. The things that I have seen in my lifetime. It is amazing. And I see the young people and it's like, y'all never know the struggle of getting that that rented, that rented uh, movie back to Blockbuster or Whatever video store, your local video store before Blockbuster took over in time and rewind back to the beginning because they were charging you if you did not rewind that tape back to the beginning. Okay? Child, let me, the struggle, the struggle, you will never know the struggle of having to be in front of your TV at 8 o'clock to watch your show. And actually watching it, you had to watch it. Because you weren't going to get a rewind until years later, a rerun of that episode. If you missed it, this is before VHS 
tapes and being able to record. This is before cable show the episode over and over and over again. Before you could record, you had to be at that television at the time it comes on. Y'all will never know the struggle of getting the newspaper every Sunday to get the TV guide to know when a show was coming on. So that you can be at your television or at a television to watch that show at that time. Oh my God. If you missed it, you just missed it. And the and the wonderful excitement when VHS came into play and you can now record and watch it later. What? Oh, we was minds blown. Oh shoot. Now I don't have to run home at eight o'clock. Okay, to go to watch Cosby Show or A Different World or that was more in the 90s. We definitely had VHSs then. Or um, I don't have to run home to, to, to watch Knott's Landing or Dallas or, you know what I'm saying, any of these shows that I wanted to watch, you know. Or traveling, you miss a show or a movie. You miss the beginning of Roots. You ain't gonna see that till the next time they air Roots. But now you have a VHS and you can tape it. You can record your show and watch it when you want to. You just have to make sure you record it. And make sure that you label it so no one records over it. But then you also had people who recorded and sold the, the movie. They recorded, they sold the tape on in, in the video. You can buy the videotape, the VHS tape or the Betamax tape. Hello, y'all. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So to, it's just wonderful to have gone through those, um, through that. Now I know I'm taking a little long because I'm, I'm just really, again, today I got time because um, I have, I want to talk manifestation, not how to, but like some people say dream talk. No, I'm not just going to dream this. I want to manifest it. So I like to speak of the things that I want to do. Um, again, when it comes to doing my live, doing my content creating, I would like to get more better equipment, a better phone, a better camera, a logo, um, maybe even a theme song. I'd like to get a better computer so that I can edit um, some of my videos so everything doesn't have to be live so that when I post on YouTube it is a more professional situation um, I also like a, a better computer so that I can go live and I like to bump up my game where I'm actually doing interviews with people um, authors um, I'm trying to think, business owners, how did you do this? How did you do that? What made you go into this type of business? How is that going? How do you navigate when the economy is all crazy? Um, how, do you, how did you learn how to pivot? Uh, you know, that type of thing. I want to start interviewing people and having like hard topics and um, having a little more information than just how I feel about stuff. Um, but I definitely, I want to start monetizing. I want to get into monetizing my content creating. Having uh, product placements and things of that sort. Um, I like to have my following. I don't want everybody to watch me. 
I'm not trying to go viral, honestly. I, I, if that's maybe, I don't want to go viral because that means a lot. Everybody's watching me. I'm not trying to be where everybody's watching me, but I do want my supporters. I want my my um, tribe. You know, everybody has a loyal tribe. Okay. Beyonce, Beehive, um, Nicki Minaj, Barb's, um, Kev on stage, stage crew. I'm a part of the stage crew. Um, uh, to hear more, more mob. You know, they have these people that has been down with him from the beginning. Well, almost the beginning. And they are loyal to to that brand, you know, you know, they're loyal to that brand, to that person, and they're not moved by little things that go on, shoot, even R. Kelly has, he has his following that still believes in him and still support him, y'all might not think that he deserves it, but he does have that loyal set of people that I'm still support you. I still support you, R. Kelly. <laughs> and that uh, being supporters, I don't want to, I mean, not support. We're not talking about fanatics that that person could never do anything wrong. I'm just saying like that dog, you, you really messed up, but I'm still here. You know, I'm still here. I'm t I want I want that following that tribe, my tribe, that I speak to, that um, is gonna be like, nah, Carl, you wrong. I don't want them. I don't want them attacking people. Like, if you was right, I'm all for you. But I'm gonna surround you and I'm gonna tell you, Carl, you wrong for that. Or they're going to teach you. They're going to say, okay, I know that's how you feel, but have you ever seen it from this point of view? You know what I'm saying? That tribe. I want, I want no tribe to sitting up there like I can do no wrong because that's not a tribe. That's a fanatic. And the moment that they realize that you, they don't get along with you, they're ready to cancel you. I'm not, I'm not, no. I want a true tribe that follows me and, um... They're just as though I need my tribe just as much as they need me. Uh, I may be the leader, okay, but I wanted to know that you're not less important just because this is my tribe. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel just as important to Kevin Sage as a stage crew member as he is to me, okay? I'm just as important to him as he is to me. He, him, him putting out con consistently putting out content means something to me, and me continually consuming his content is important to him. And um, I really like that. Um, the second thing I kind of want to manifest is my house. This is something that has been put on my heart a long time ago by God, a single family house. Um, my goal for that house is not just to have, oh, see, look, I got a house. No, it's not about me. It really isn't about me. It's really about my desire is to get me this large home so and have enough space in that house that I can... Help someone in need. Give a hand up. Because there's... I, I oftentimes found myself without my own place. And needing somewhere to stay. And there's been people who took me into their home. And um, until I can get up on my feet. And I want to do the same thing here. Not only that. But I just don't want any house anywhere. I want a nice house in a really nice swanky community because also I want people to realize, hey, just because you made bad mistakes or whatever the situation is, 
this is what you can have. I want you to see, I want you to get used to the swanky life. I want you to get used to having a yard, to, to seeing people living in houses. Because a lot of people, you know, they go through a hard time and the only thing they can afford is to live in the hood. And if that's all they see is hood and like every place they have, they're used to roaches and rats and they're used to um, hearing sirens at night and used to hearing just people being loud and, and, and just crying. You know what I'm saying? I want to kind of, basically, I want to be the Uncle Phil to the Will in, like, in Fresh Prince. Like, let's get you out of that. I want you to see and know what it means to have a good life. That is my vision of what I want to do. It's just not a matter of me just, you know, getting a house. It's just me. I'm not married. I don't have several, I don't have a lot of kids. I just want, I want this big house, one, to have, I want the big house to have a basement apartment, not a dusty basement, like I told y'all in the story before, but a nice, like, it's nice, and they have their own interests, and I want, the, 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 the goal of that is not to make money off of that apartment, but to actually give someone an opportunity to know the good life and get used to it and not accept run down, roach infested, rat infested, slum lord type of situation. Okay. And have it at a reasonable price. Now I'm not going to, it's not free. They will pay for it, but I want to show them a better life. I give, sometimes people just need a hand up. They don't need you to take care of them. They just need someone to give them a hand up to here. You just need a lift up to this next level. See what you can have. And aspire to be here and not down there. So that is my whole reason of wanting this uh, uh, big house one. That's the, the main reason with the basement apartment. Like and when I say a basement apartment, like it's a two bedroom. There's a kitchen or at least a kitchenette, uh, a bathroom, a full bathroom. Um, they have their own interests. Excuse me, I'm scratching the inside of my nose and that looks like I'm digging for gold. But okay, whatever. You might not even met, no notice that or cared. Um, they have their own entrance. You know, it is an actual apartment. You don't have to come through my place. You can go straight in there. You don't have to say hello to me. You can just go straight into your, your apartment without having to see me or anyone that's there. One. The second reason why I want this big house is I want to get into a tradition that on certain holiday, a certain holiday, there's two two reasons. On holidays, I want my family from the DMV and abroad. And I, when I say family, I'm talking about my siblings and their spouses and my nephews and all that to come. When they come down, they don't have to get a hotel room because my place is too small. They can't hold them. I want them all to be able to stay in, in my house comfortably. Okay? We can get our drink on comfortably. You know what I'm saying? And you can pass out. Your room is right up the hall. You know what I'm saying? You got a room. You can stay there. You know, you don't have to go anywhere. That's one reason. And the second reason why I want this big house is I do want my nephews to come down during the summer, giving their parents a break. Give me all my nephews for the summer. I'm going to be, I'm going to be the auntie and we going to have fun. I want to you know, let's, hey, bring them their devices. Tell me what their food allergies are. We're going to have fun, y'all, for a week or two weeks or for the whole summer. To be honest with you, if I can get this popping off, I can do do my be with my nephews the whole summer and they spend their whole summer with Auntie Akara. 
You know what I'm saying? Just having fun, learning things, still, you know, if they take a piano, we're going to take piano lessons down here. We're going to do stuff. I want to be a part. I want them to come down. And I, I, and all of this is stemmed from knowing how it was to be a single mom. None of my siblings are single parents. Thank you, Jesus. I was the only one. I'm glad I paved that way so they know don't go this way. Okay, I went down this road, none of them went down my road, except for my brother William, kind of, kind of, but he wasn't a single parent, so anyway, so that's kind of what I'm, that is my biggest dream that I've had for the longest time, and um, I'm going to achieve it. I'm going to achieve it. I'm going to get that house before Jesus comes back. I'm going to get that, my dream house. I'm going to be able to influence someone in need. Okay, someone is going, it's going to be the perfect person. I know God will send me the perfect person, couple, single mother, single father, or couple. It's like, I got the perfect place for you. Um, you can stay with me. Your rent is this. You know what I'm saying? What, you know, if you need help with doing anything else, or oh, you have this, I want to help out. I really want to, I want to influence someone to want better for them, for their lives than the bare minimum. Struggling all your life, you know what I'm saying? I want to influence someone to want better. Two, um, and I want to, my family. I want my family to be around. I want them to have a place to come and stay. I want my nephews to have a place to come and stay. Hell, even if one of my nephews graduates high school and go to school down here in Georgia or wherever the house is. Now, I'm not going to limit God to Georgia. I just envision it to being in Georgia, in the Atlanta metropolitan area. But it could be Phoenix. It could be Nevada. It could be, it ain't going to be California. I'm going to tell you right now. Okay, I'm going to tell you right now. God, I, I know it sounds weird for me to be a dark-skinned black person to say I see it being in the South, though. I'm not going to Chicago. Maybe Tennessee. That's about as cold as I'm getting. Um, Tennessee, it, it might be Texas. Texas, Nevada. If it's in the South of this country, hey. Okay. I probably, I can see that happening. But somewhere with Texas, it's not going to be, I mean, I have land in Florida, thank you, Jesus, but it's probably not going to be Florida either. Um, not Florida, maybe Georgia, Texas, not Louisiana, I don't even, I mean, like, nothing against Louisiana. I like visiting, day trip, but I've never stayed overnight, so I can't, I can't imagine myself doing that. But, that's the end of today's manifestation talk of what I, just watch me, watch me. I'm going to get that house. If God didn't put that on my heart, not for me to get it. I, God didn't put on my heart in, in the Bible, in, I want to say it's Psalms. I, I've gone a little longer than I normally do. I know I have. I know I can feel it. Um... But in Psalms, it says that God gives you the desires of your heart. And a lot of people have interpreted that as being that he will give you whatever you want. But my past presented a new way of seeing that is that not only will he, he's not going to give you what you want as a human being. He actually gives you what you want. <laughs> I know that sounds weird. Think about it. He, The desires that you have, God gave that desire for you to want that. He gave you the want to. He gave you that desire. If you want to get married, and you really, I mean, that there's not, you know the difference between it's like, I think I wanted to get married because that's what society expects of a woman, to get married and want to be married. And then there's a desire that God gives you that you just know that you're meant to be married. Excuse me for rubbing my eye. Um, 
<laughs> but hey, you get, I told y'all, I did, y'all get it live. He gives you desire to want to settle down and be with Mary. And I think the re I'm talking about that, the reason why I have not gotten married and never really settled down with anyone is I'm not sure if I really ever wanted to be married or like this was my destiny. Like that is something that is a given to me that I, that was my goal. Never really was my goal. I never thought about getting married like as a goal, goal, like as a child and the desire. Never wanted that. I think I just wanted that because that's what society expected of me. That's what my mom expected of me. Um, that's what my parents, society, you know, expected of me. But I'm quite happy being alone. I'm quite happy being alone. The only thing that kind of gets a little bad when it comes to being alone and unmarried is the sex part. You know, I mean, I still have sexual desires. And I, it'd be nice to have a partner that is committed to me and I'm committed to him to get, to have, to, to quench those desires when they come up. And that, that would be nice. But outside of that... You know, I love being by myself. I love it. I love it. I really do. And I know y'all think it's like, now nah, she's faking. Honey, I love it. I love it. I love coming home to no one being in the house with me. Not having to cook for nobody. Not having to consider nobody's feelings about if I'm, you know, you know. <laughs> I, I like having a place that I can come and I can be 100% me and not have to concern myself of offending anybody or the way she came in. She didn't say hello to nobody. And you, like, literally, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I didn't say hello. Fuck you. Get, get, you know, I mean, like, you know what I'm saying? People really get offended if you don't say hello when you walk in the house. And to me, it's like, I'm here. You know I'm here. I mean, I mean, I guess naturally you're going to say hello if you see someone standing there. But if I don't say hello and I just come in and I'm just deep in thought or whatever, I'm on the phone, whatever, like, you know what I'm saying? If I don't acknowledge you right away, you know, sometimes you just, I'm going on the beeline straight to the bathroom. Ah, I don't want to be, like, have to say anything to you. I got to let me go to the bathroom and I come back and I'll tell you everything. But that's it. I, I'm not going to go into any more of it. But trust me, God put these desires on my heart. I'm going to get what I asked for. I promise you, honey. I promise you. Watch me. Y'all going to remember my name, Akara. You going to, I'm going to be a major influence. I'm going to find my tribe. I'm going to stay out here. You're going to see my face. You may see it with makeup on the next time. You might see it with better jewelry and a better clamor because it's clearer. Maybe even in a studio or something like that. But trust me, I'm going to be a major force to be reckoned with. And I'm going to get that house. And I'm going to post it. And I'm going to let y'all know, see, I got my, he will do it. I'm not going to say won't he do it. He will do it. So that's it. Y'all have a wonderful day. Remember, love yourself, love your neighbor, and stay authentic. Y'all have a good one. Bye.